Shields up, Ironbreakers. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully all of you are doing good. Hopefully you can improve on that. We're doing a little bit of a live stream where I will be answering uh, as many questions as I possibly can from you guys about Dragon's Dogma 2. So feel free to get me started at any point. Ask your questions away and I'll do my best to give you an answer. Although it is important to mention that all of this is based off of, uh, you know, three hours of gameplay and a little bit of conversation. That's about it. Rory, did you play fighter? Yes, I did. How did it feel? Feels pretty friggin' good. I have some, um, oh, I should have, I should have brought up the gameplay footage before. Give me a second. Uh, where is this? Not here, not there. Yoink. <laughs> I'm a professional streamer. I'm a professional content creator, all right? You guys have no idea. God damn it, Tommy Giggles. <laughs> Thank you very much for the souls. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Yeah, guys, that's the name of the station uh, in the UK where uh the the train that i that I, not the train the the underground the metro i guess uh that i caught from the the airport it would the final destination was called that i'm scared of saying it on youtube because youtube might think that i'm trying to say something else but yeah it was called cock fosters so i, I don't know what's up with that that's a, that's a little bit weird Uh, hot take, 30 FPS is fine. Most people who whine about it can't even tell while watching gameplay. I mean, I can definitely tell when it's 30 FPS versus 60. Uh, I will always prefer 60. That that's I will not move from that point ever. Now, if you're going to ask me, okay, are you not going to play a game because it's 30 FPS? No. Does it bother me? Yeah. I'd rather it be 60. I always prefer it being 60, but would I not play a game because it's it's 30 instead of 60? No, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. I mean, I play a lot of games on the Switch for crying out loud, you know? But yeah. Can you dogma my dragon? No, I won't do that. Does Mystic Spear buff its own weapon or does the mage do that for him? Uh, in the gameplay that I did... Most of it was the mage buffing my own weapon, but the Mystic Spear Hand also deals magic damage with his attacks after you upgrade some of his abilities. So like the base version of some of the abilities on the Mystic Spear Hand, uh, they'll just deal physical damage, whereas the, you know, the upgraded version of those abilities will deal, uh, will deal magic damage sorry i was just grabbing this uh this thing here actually uh, let me see here i want to go through some more questions that i see a lot of people sobbing about the warfare makes the other vocations pointless what's your thought i don't think that warfare is going to make other vocations pointless because number one warfare is going to have lower stats which means you're not going to be as tanky, you're not going to deal as much damage. So basically a lot of the stuff is going to be from you combining the other vocations to, you know, to really min-max all of your ability to deal damage and survive and all that stuff. The problem is, I didn't get to play Warfare, so I don't know too much, but it was my understanding that from my experience with this demo, every class, every vocation has its own vocation mechanic, which I explained in my video. So for instance, in the case of the fighter, his vocation mechanic is the ability to block and parry. With the Mystic Spear Hand, his... Damn, seriously? You really gotta honk like that? The train guy's just like... Burr, burr. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Anyway, the Mystic Spear Hand... He has this thing called the Redoubted Bolt that you can charge and then shoots out this spell that, like, slows enemies down and allows you to teleport to enemies and whatnot. That's that class mechanic. And so on and so forth, right? Every vocation has their own mechanic. And so I'm assuming that the Warfarer's mechanic is swapping vocation. So you'll probably be losing the vocation-specific mechanic of each of the vocations. 
So if you have a fighter, maybe you can't block. Although that's weird. Now that I'm thinking about it, that'd be really weird. Having a fighter and not being able to block. <laughs> I'm not sure how that would work, to be honest. So yeah, I'm still not sure. But I imagine that there's going to be some type of a downside to you being able to just swap vocations at will, you know? Or maybe you need to use one of your own uh, vocation skills to be able to swap vocations. There's going to have to be something there. There has to be downsides to the warfare. Personally, I'm much more excited about Mystic Spearhand than warfare right now. Did you enjoy your time with the game? I loved it. Like, those three hours went by like that. It was super fast. Does Magic Archer have any physical damage capacity now that it can't use daggers? Uh, yes. So one of the attacks that uh, we had was this uh, thing that was like... Actually, I think I might even have it on the video here. Give me a second. Because I have my 20 minutes of footage because we're only allowed to show 20 minutes. Let me see if I actually have the thing where I shoot... Yeah, it should be here. Yeah, see, this ability that I'm doing right now... Let me actually pause the music. Why is there no sound? Did I seriously record this without sound? Oh, I'm so dumb. Why would you do this? Okay. I'll deal with that later. But yeah, this ability that I'm charging right here, which is called, what is it called again? Hailstone Bolt. It makes this little projectile of ice. That's physical damage, mostly physical damage, because that was the only way to deal with the golems since they're very resistant to magical damage. Did someone ask him about the 10 vocations thing? If you are asking me whether or not there's only 10 vocations, as far as I'm aware, there's only 10 vocations, and I believe that's been confirmed in some recent interviews with uh, Itsuno-san. So, yeah. Itsuno says everything in the game is intentional, and then he gives us the trickster with purple and pink. What a chad. <laughs> what platform did you play on? Uh, the, the build that we were playing on was on PlayStation 5. Reese, this is the title screen. The previews show Dragon's Dogma in the title instead of Dragon's Dogma 2. Even the font is the same as the original. Could be a preview thing. I don't remember, but I can actually check. I can't show you, but I can check. Give me a second. Let me get rid of that. Let's see. Did I record that? I think I did. Well, I know that Paradise and 2.6 did, so I can check on theirs. <gasps> it does! <laughs> it does. <laughs> it's funny. I didn't even notice it, but yeah, it does. It just says Dragon's Dogma. It doesn't say Dragon's Dogma 2. That's how early the build was! It was from Dragon's Dogma 1! <laughs> Does the gameplay feel as jank as the videos seem to be? Why would you say that the videos are jank? I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the videos being jank at all. Where was the thing? Here it is. Like... I'm still surprised. Did I really? I need, I need to check this thing. This is so frustrating. I might have muted it because I was like... Is it... Good lord! Don't look. You're, you're taking a peek behind the curtain right now. Is it this one? No. Should be... Actually, it is this one. Yeah, this might be roll. Oh, I did mute it. So dumb. God, that's stupid. <laughs> Guys, you're not, you're not watching this right now, okay? Just, just pretend that you're not watching this. I mean, I'm not breaking embargo, but it's just like, it's very embarrassing 
that I actually rendered out a video without audio. Like, what kind of a... What kind of professional does that? What kind of person renders a video with no audio? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Mistakes have been made. This is fine. There. We'll just render that out, and it will, uh, we'll have that in a couple of seconds. Wait, is it 30 FPS locked? Uh, no, it is 30. It was 30 FPS uncapped, as far as I'm aware. But like I said, that's PlayStation 5, and that was an early build. And here's a, an interesting thing, when it comes to to builds, I have definitely come to realize that a lot of people don't understand how early builds work in video games because people seem to be under the impression that whenever somebody goes to a preview event or something. Like the developers are constantly comp compiling all of the latest builds so that if you go to an event, you know, three weeks or whatever ahead of the game's release, that build that they have there is going to be in line with the current development build. That is not the case, you know. People work on different aspects of the game and then they compile a version of the game at some point for like events and shows and whatnot and then that's the version that most people are going to play. They're not every other day compiling a new version just to make it available for media and press and whatnot. That's not the way that it goes. So the version that I played could have been months old, basically. So there's a lot of people making the assumption that like, oh, we're three weeks away. What do you mean an early build? Yeah, I, that's exactly what it means. It's an early build, probably from months ago, because they're not compiling new builds every week to make them available for media to play. That's not how game development works. But a lot of people don't appear to understand that. Or Boris mentioned it was more 20 than 30. Did you get the same experience? It's like, I've noticed some dips uh, from 30, but it's hard to tell because it's not like I have a frame counter, okay? I can, I can tell the difference between 60 and 30, and I can tell when something's dipping below 30. And at that point, you know... I only start really noticing it around like 15 or something. Like I know it's below 30, but I don't know exactly what it was at certain points of my gameplay. Should I pronounce it differently? Probably said Kofster or something. I don't know what that's about. How does the leveling system work? By the way, I'm scrolling through chat. That's like probably further above than what you guys are asking. So bear with me. The leveling system is just you level up, you get stats, you get your class, uh, what do they call it? Discipline or whatever. You get that, and then you can go to an NPC, and you can invest your discipline points to get new skills, new augments, new core skills. It kind of works very much like the original. The difference is, in terms of stat growths, which I'm assuming is what you're asking, from what I could tell, and again, this is important, from what I could tell from the testing that I've done, because they did let me go there and change vocations, which is interesting, because you see a lot of the previews, and everybody is saying, oh, these previews were set up for this, so we're going to show you these two classes. Nobody told me that I couldn't change vocations, quite quite the opposite, because I've asked, hey, can I change vocations? And they're, yeah, do whatever you want, but you only have three hours, so figure out what you want to do. So that's why... Uh, you know, the game was set up for Magic Archer and Mystic Spearhand, but you could play whatever vocation you wanted. I played two additional vocations, which was Fighter and Trickster, because I know that a lot of people are going to be curious about Trickster. But uh, yeah, you could play whatever vocation you wanted. You didn't have to play the two vocations that were there. But anyway, I went through and I swapped the vocations on my character. And what I noticed was the base stats of the character changed so <clears throat> the magic archer and this is same character same level nothing really changed besides that but when he was a magic archer his base strength was 96 and then i swapped it into a warrior and the base strength became 196 so that's why i said in my video there's not you know there's not the same stat growth that we had in the original Dragon's Dogma because that would have not been the case, right? Because you would level up as a certain thing and you would get certain stats and that's what you get. Uh, and in there, the strength changed. And it was not a gear thing because they give you values for what your current strength is and what your base strength is. And I only based my stuff on the values for the base strength. 
How's the UI compared to Dragon's Dogma 1? Honestly, it's a big part of why I didn't like the first one. I mean, the UI looked fine. Do I have... Let me just pull up my, my gameplay footage and I can show you guys. Wait, give me a second. Like, this is the, what the UI looks like. So you have your pawn instructions here. When you press L1, this thing actually goes into your consumable. So you can go L1 up D-pad. There'll be a healing consumable. Down D-pad, you know, uh, your stamina consumables. Then on the right D-pad, be a lantern. Over here, you have, like, everything regarding what each of your what your current active thing is. So I'm doing rivet shot right now with the magic archer. You have your weapon skills in here that they tell you. And I think you can hide this. I didn't really mess too much with the settings because since I only had three hours, obviously I focused everything on capturing footage, not really messing around with the game settings since I couldn't even capture the menu to begin with. So, you know, felt kind of pointless. You have the boss's health gauge up here. You have your own health gauge down here. There's also little buffs that pop up whenever they're relevant. There's a stamina gauge here. There's a map here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, your characters will have uh, indicators of their health. Your your pawns, I mean. So I think the UI is fine. It's not really problematic for me personally. But uh, I've, I've heard complaints from people, which I thought was like weird. I think this, this is a fairly minimalistic UI. I don't think it's too problematic. And there probably are options to customize it, but I didn't play with that too much. Uh, let me see. Sounds like we could use that PS5 Pro coming. I don't know. <clears throat> it's weird to not have a roll button during gameplay, considering most action-based games like Monster Hunter and Elden Ring have this option to dodge attacks, and Dragon's Dogma 2 gameplay just seems a bit dull. See, that, that's just one of those things that I feel like the dodge roll has become a staple, so everybody expects the dodge roll. And I'll tell you right now, I was mashing circle the moment that I started playing as a fighter because, you know, you're just used to it. You mash circle to get away. You know, the last game, the last action game that I had played was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and in there you use circle to dodge, so it made sense. It's weird, but the whole thing about this game is about positioning and utilizing the pawns. They want you to be able to rely on the pawns. So, you know, you're going to need a tank to tank for you. You're not just going to be able to get in there and get a get out of jail free card in the form of a dodge roll with invincibility frames. I believe that probably the thief will have a dodge roll, but I'm not sure because I didn't play thief and I didn't play the base archer. Because the thing about swapping vocations, it required a lot of setup, right? Because if you wanted to swap to another vocation in this build, I would have to sell all the equipment of my current vocation to get enough money to be able to buy gear for the vocation that I wanted to play. So that made it kind of a bothersome process of like every time that you want to swap vocations, you have to go to the armors, to the armor, the person who sells armor, you have to go to the person that sells weapons, you have to buy that stuff. And that's like, you know, tick tock every single minute that you're spending in there and then configuring the character itself with core skills and augments and the weapon skills and all of that tick tock, you've wasted 10, 15 minutes just setting up to play a different thing, right? That's why I didn't play more than two additional vocations. But, like, uh, I believe that probably the Thief will end up having a dodge roll or something along those lines. But the idea here is positioning and pattern recognition. It's less dodge out of everything and more don't be there and rely on your pawns to make up for whatever uh, weaknesses your own character has. So if you can't dodge roll, and if you're a character, you know, that you want to be in melee range, you better get yourself a good tank, right? That's the idea. It, it is going to be weird for a lot of people. There's an adaptation period. It was the same thing in the original because the original also didn't have uh, a dodge roll button. So, you know. Uh, I do have my B-roll up now and it should have audio, right? No, it still doesn't have audio. Did I do the same thing twice? I'm so smart. I could swear I put audio this time. It's not. Maybe it hasn't updated yet. Yeah, there's audio in here. 
I didn't mute it this time. Oh, I called it untitled. That's why. Okay. It's fine. It'll work. So let's see. Can you emote in the game? I believe so. I didn't really test too much when it came to emote. Jesus Christ. So many questions came through. Oh my God. Okay, I'm going to have to quick fire some of these because this Jesus chat is going insane. <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> oh no. I can't even scroll this high up. What is going on? I was going through chat slowly. I can't even scroll this high up. Did they change the damage calculation? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would even test that. There's not even damage numbers in the build that we played. You can't lose see the magic archer hemming in the trailer. Guys, that confirmed 10 vocations. Yes, imagine the world. People can play a single-player game and not have others cry about meta. Do you know if there'll be any big shields like the, like the Mystic Knight had? Uh, there's going to be fighter shields. How big they are, I don't know. But I don't expect to see big tower shields. Fire that chooses violence. Do mobs drop gear? Yes. Is it weird to not have a roll button? To okay, okay, I did find it. This is where I was. Fire that can block equals a berserker, maybe? No, a fire that can block is a warrior. And warriors wield two-handed weapons. Is only fighter able to roll? Fighter is not able to roll, as far as I'm aware. Only thief, probably. Do you know how long the main quest is? No. We only played for three hours. Do you have any idea if they will have ultra-wide support out of the box? Nope. Just want to unga as a warrior. Climbing monster better and much faster in global for all class, or does it still feel slow for some compared to thief vocations? It felt pretty much the same regardless of class, but I mostly played Mystic Spearhand, Fighter, and I didn't really do a lot of climbing as a trickster because it wouldn't have made sense, so felt pretty much the same. Um, I will say, uh, climbing is improved, and now you can actually let go. Like, say, if you're on the very top of a dragon, you can let go, and stuff will work. Give me just a second. I can actually show you that. Okay, see, now we have sound. This is what I was... So this is the gameplay footage that I recorded, that um, that I selected from the multiple hours of footage that I had. Right, this is my fighter footage. And so you get, in regards to the climbing thing, like here's my fighter climbing up one of these cyclopses, I think. Not climb up one of these? I think I do. Oh yeah, this happened to me right at the start too. Like I just step outside as a fighter and boom. Yeah, you see how I'm standing on top of the griffin's head, but I'm not grappled, right? Because notice how my stamina is regening. So this is a huge improvement to the grabbing system, in my opinion. So yeah, that, that was pretty cool. But uh, let me see if I can get some more of these questions. <laughs> Ice Hero, this physical, yeah. Spear class looks fun. It's my favorite one. How does the augments work like previous game? Yes, you unlock the augments for your vocation of choice, and then you equip them with whatever vocation you want. Is the stat scaling same as Dragon's Dogma 1? Already answered that. No. Finally, new third-party games for Xbox dying from hunger. Fighter's the only vocation that roll. It's not the fighter's the thief, I think. Mystic Spearhand, Mystic Knight share the same name in Japanese, which is Makenshi, or Magical Swordsman. Is it the replacement of Mystic Knight? I believe so. <clears throat> yes, they confirmed this in interviews, Swordsman. How's the Eye of the Pawns? I thought it was okay. It's still not perfect. Like, they will still die, but that's the whole point. You still have to lead the pawn somehow. Because if the, the pawn AI was absolutely perfect, the game would be too easy. There's going to be a bit of struggle. They're, you're going to need to lead them. How do the combat feel? Is it Souls-like or Monster Hunter-like? Neither. It's like Dragon's Dogma. Closer to Monster Hunter than Souls, if that makes sense, but no dodge roll. <laughs> Is there secret armor and weapons to find in the game? I would imagine so. How are the loots after you beat a boss? I, I don't know. <laughs> like, listen, I tried fighting the dragon, okay? Let me just show you what that looked like. Uh, yeah. This is me trying to fight the dragon. Look at how much damage I'm dealing. Look at how many bars he has. Okay? 
It's not easy. So I didn't do a lot of bosses. Mostly it was like ogres and cyclopses were the stuff that I was actually able to kill. So I don't know. But I'm assuming it's going to be kind of like the original Dragon's Dogma, wherein you usually kill a boss, you get materials, and then there's going to be chests nearby that will give you actual items. Sanger Tampere, hope you're doing well. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks exciting, but I have to know. Does it rely on the pawn's concept as much as the first game? Yes. It does, Barsani. There's... You, you definitely need good pawns in this game. Especially for those of you that want to play the trickster, you are definitely going to need excellent pawns for that. Does the world feel alive? Yes. Most definitely. Like, I just wanted to stop and explore all the time. But the problem is, when you're capturing footage, you can't really just stop and take it all in. But there were several nooks and crannies where I was like, oh man, I want to I wanna see if I can find a way to go through that waterfall. I want to see if I can find a way to go deeper into that cave. Ooh, I want to accept this quest and see where it leads me. But, you know. 30 FPS in Dragon's Dogma 2 is a deal breaker for me. Hey, that's fine. Uh, the, the thing is, I don't think it's going to be 30 FPS if it's on PC. And I don't know how it's going to be on console. Like I said, all I know is they said uncapped frame rate. But what I played felt mostly like 30 FPS. Is there armor customizable of some sort? Remember seeing something about dice for armor? I don't know. I didn't really get to test that. But I think in interviews they said there isn't. But I don't know. Still trying to decide Dragon's Dogma 2 or Ronin. For me, it's going to be Dragon's Dogma 2. How does leveling work? Is it the same in Dragon's Dogma 1? Everybody just wants to know about the stat growth thing, I guess. I'll, I'll mention it again. Um, stat growth does not work like Dragon's Dogma 1. What does that mean? In Dragon's Dogma 1, if you leveled up as a warrior and then you swapped to a sorcerer, you would still have warrior stats, which is not particularly good to play as a sorcerer. In Dragon's Dogma 2, when you swap your vocation, it swaps the stats. It changes your base stats to be adequate for that vocation. So from what I can tell, you'll be able to play whatever vocation you want and you don't have to worry about the stat growths because when you swap them around, everything will go right back to normal. You were just playing the first game the entire time. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. How does the augments work? Same thing as Dragon's Dogma 1. You level up the vocation that has the augment you want, you buy that augment, and then you swap vocations and you equip it. I think you could equip, was it 8 or 10? I don't remember. But you can equip a decent chunk of, of um, augments. Any unrevealed vocations you can talk about? As far as I'm aware, there's only 10 of them. How was your experience playing as fighters? Pretty fun. Dragon's Dogma 1 had a bit of jank and it was part of the game. Did you notice any parry skills for fighter outside of just blocking? No, and it, but it's important to mention, like I said, this, th this build was optimized for the Mystic Archer and the Magic Archer and the Mystic Spearhand. And one of the things that I noticed was when I swapped vocations, the other vocations didn't have as many skills available as the Magic Archer and the Mystic Spearhand. So Warrior had like four or five skills, something like that, whereas your Mystic Spearhand would have like eight. So we had access to even less skills when we swapped to vocations that, you know, the save hadn't really been prepared for. So I didn't see that many skills with Fighter. Has the map been made easier to read compared to the first one? Funny you should say that. That's one of the things that I commented with uh, the team there that I, I kept getting confused by the map. But they let you put markers on it. So that's kind of like how I do it. I'd look at the map and be like, I want to go here. I'm going to put a marker here. And that usually makes it fairly easy to, to do. Are pawns better than Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen? I think they're better. I think they're better, but they're not perfect. Because, again, if they were perfect, the game would be too easy. Are you going to re-roll into an assassin with blast arrows if you have trouble? With you better believe it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I will. 
<laughs> I can't do assassin though, so it'll probably be like an archer or something, but yeah. Hey, look, if the game gives me a problem to solve, I'm going to solve it and explosions solve all problems. Velor VLTN, I've already said multiple times, yes. Uh, the stats change when you change classes. To do ultra wide support on PC, don't know. Stats change, when you're... yes. Uh, the overall, the inventory system feels pretty much the same as it was on the first one. It's climbing a monster full meta. I thought I already answered that. Really disappointed there isn't a monk vocation. Don't leak your porn folder. Stop. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Professional was probably sleep deprived. Very much so. You know what I love most of all the gameplay? The ragdolls, man. Oh, dude. Dude, do I still have this open? So, like, look. I'm going to put out a short later today. Uh, and I, ha I have to show you guys something. Dude, this, this thing's hilarious. Wait. This one? Yeah. So, like, this footage here is from Eric's Gaming. Oh, you guys can barely see this. But like, if you pay attention, there's a Saurian here, right? Watch what happens. <laughs> oh, man. I need to render this video. I haven't rendered this video yet. Because then I could show it to you guys in full screen. I, I hate the short format. It's so annoying. But it is what it is. It is what it is. There. Let's do this. That one too. We can make our own audio and sound effects while watching the video. <laughs> Wolf something packerisms. How varied were the pawns' voices and personalities in your three hours? Uh, I didn't really change pawns, so I just kept whatever we had. They were fine. <clears throat> Do you have Endgame or New Game Plus? I don't know. Early builds are almost always prone optimization. Yep. And capped is good for future. Wish there was an option for 30 locked. Yeah. It'd be good to have more options, but again, I didn't really touch up on too much of visual options or any at all, because it was just like, I want gameplay. I need gameplay. Can I, borrow a, can I borrow a pawn from a friend that plays on another console? I don't think they've officially confirmed this, but I don't believe that's going to be the case. I don't think that pawns are going to be cross-platforms. Rory, what is something you are anticipating that hasn't been confirmed by the game devs? Uh, in regards to this game, I'd like it if there were more vocations than the ones that were announced, but I think they've already said they're pretty much set in stone. But, like, a new vocation would be nice. Uh, but other than that, maybe, like, special dungeons or something? I don't know. I haven't thought too much about that. The last couple of days have been very, very busy. God damn it, Rui was about to sit down for my coding class. It's too bad. We might see a demo getting announced tomorrow at the Capcom Highlights show. I doubt that is going to be the case simply because if there was going to be a demo, the build that we would have played would have probably been that demo because that's usually how it goes. Like whenever there's a preview event or something and there's like a demo, the content creators would usually play that demo. So considering that we basically were playing an early version of the game, I wouldn't expect there to be a demo, but I don't know. I don't have any inside information on that. Do, 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 do. I believe that what they're going to be showing today at the Xbox Partner Stream, which, by the way, I'm going to be streaming after this, uh, I believe what they're going to talk about is that new Capcom game, Kunitsugami. That is going to be at that showcase. I don't know if they have any Dragon's Dogma, especially considering that there's going to be a Dragon's Dogma-specific showcase 
uh, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, which we will also live stream, by the way. How many skills or abilities do you think a vocation has? I have no idea. You can only equip four uh, skills, though. Unless there's some hidden mechanic that I'm not aware of yet. Did weight inventory management improve? Not as far as I could tell. Uh, although, one of the one of the things that one of your pawns will have is... Uh, what was it called? Logistician, I think. That's... Um, <clears throat> you know how your pawns have special pawn skills? Or whatever it was called? Because they've showed this in one of the previous showcases. So, there's one of those called Logisticians. And basically, you can only have one. So they talked about one being Chirurgeon, which would be a pawn that would be good at healing other pawns using items. So like if they have healing items on themselves, they'll just like heal the other pawns. Uh, there was another one that was like Elven Speak, so your pawn would be able to interpret Elvish for you. And then there's one called Logistician, wherein your pawns will automatically manage the weight, distribute the weight, Accord it evenly among other pawns, I think that was the their thing. So there's a pawn that can kind of manage some of that stuff for you. But other than that, yeah. And as a matter of fact, for the build that we had in the demo, literally the first slightly heavier material that I picked up put my character in heavy. Uh, it was a Mystic Spear Hand. Uh, the way that they had him set up with the items that he had, he was on average weight. And I remember that I killed, I think it was a Cyclops or whatever it was. And I got some piece of hide or something like that from the Cyclops. Instantly took me to heavy. So yeah, that is still going to be a thing that you guys are going to have to deal with. That we are going to have to deal with. Did you try to lure monsters inside the cities? No. You carve out part of a game for a demo, something else to break stuff. Okay. Uh... We're able to confirm or ask if the quests have time limits. No, I didn't. Tr I didn't test quests at all. I focused on you know the stuff that I put on my video, which was how the stat growth work, how does you know equipping skills work, how all of this stuff. That's what I focused on, and I focused on learning more about the trickster. But I'm going to be making a separate video talking specifically about that. This game still has no stealth mechanics like the original. Uh. I'm trying to think if there were like passive skills that would make you less likely to be targeted. I don't I don't remember. Trickster seems pretty lackluster based solely on watching content. Would you agree or disagree? I heavily disagree. Like the thing about Trickster for me is that I just liked Spearhand so much that I want to play Spearhand. But Trickster is actually a ton of fun. Like, when I started playing Trickster, because apparently um, with uh, the UK team, nobody else besides uh, me and 2-6 and, and Paradise, nobody else tried, you know, making a Trickster. Because like I said, you could. You could just like reconfigure vocations however you want. So when we started messing around with the Trickster, everybody in the room was laughing their asses off at the shenanigans that you could pull off. Like, to give you guys an idea... One of the things that I did with the trickster, right? Because I'm still used to just running in, because that's what, you know, you usually do in most action games. At least I do. You just run in and you start attacking stuff, right? So I'm playing the trickster, muscle memory takes over, and I'm just running in and start attacking stuff. And I get my, you know, my complete ass beat, right? I'm just getting pummeled left, right, and center. My pawns are all dying from this group of like goblins mixed in with wolves and whatnot. And everything is just like getting completely out of control. And me, I'm the trickster. I can't even do much to kind of like salvage the situation just from engaging in combat. So what did I do? I run away a little bit and I use the trickster's effigy, right? Which is uh, going to be your triangle attack. So I put down the effigy and what the effigy does is all of your attacks transfer your aggro to this effigy. And so, as I do this, the goblins start running towards the effigy. So then, I go into that trance mode that you can kind of like float into the air. And so I'm floating because there's nothing attacking me. They're all running after the effigy. I'm floating into the air, and I put the effigy in the air out of reach. And then I, I mean, I, I move myself out of reach, and then I teleport the effigy to my position. 
And now the effigy is like standing in the middle, in the middle of the air. And so the goblins come running back and they're just like all looking up, not attacking me at all. And I'm just like sitting there, huh? That's pretty cool. So then I move away a little bit and I make a, a fake wall. I start resurrecting my pawns. Like the trickster is actually very, very fun. I thought it was really cool. So yeah. Based on the videos I've seen so far, it seems the magic archer only really has bow now. Yeah, it's most vocations, from what I can tell, only have one weapon. Like if we go over here to action and let me just on here just if we actually go over here to the vocations right so fighter is one of the exceptions if you consider a shield a weapon and i do because you know it is a separate item that you equip so fighter has multiple weapons and Warfare will have multiple weapons because that's a part of its class mechanic. Obviously, he's going to have multiple weapons. But all of the other classes all have one weapon. So the Archer has his bow. Thief has his knives, which I believe is just one item. Uh, Mage has staff. Warrior has two-handed weapon. Sorcerer has staff. Magic Archer has bow. And Mystic Spearhand has a spear. So, And, you know, Trickster has his sensor. So... All of the classes essentially have one weapon, save for fighter and warfare. That's just the way that it is. So yeah, Magic Archer only has bow now. It's his magic bow. But he can still cast spells. As a matter of fact, that was another thing that I noticed as I was going over some of the footage today. Like I said, I'm not allowed to show you guys menus. I actually thought that it was weird because a lot of people put out menu gameplay footage and it was very specific for me, for my embargo, that I could not do that. So I don't know what's up with that. But anyway... Uh, I was looking over some some footage earlier this morning, and I was looking at some of the skills. And for the Mystic Spear Hand, some of the skills showed up as a staff skill, even though you don't have a staff, right? You're using your twin blade thing. So, you know, those tell you this is an actual spell. And then other ones would show the symbol of the weapon, and, you know, these are actual weapon skills. So basically, you still have skills that are maybe not exactly for your weapon, but the only weapon that you have is, you know, your thing. Ray, what do you think about there apparently only being 10 vocations? Personally, makes no sense to me considering advanced versions of Strider slash Thief have, haven't been showed. See, that's the thing. Uh, those classes are just legit classes in their own right. That's just the way that it goes. I mean, if you consider the warrior an advanced vocation of the fighter, it doesn't really make sense. Because the warrior is a two-handed dude, and the fighter has a shield. It's just, I always thought of it like that as well in the original, which is one of the reasons why I never really played fighter, because I would just, you know, I'd play other classes. But yeah, I think that's just a misconception that some of us in the community had, myself included, that the base vocations were not just like, a full-on vocation that they were just stepping stones to get to another vocation when that was never really the case <laughs> just like it isn't now so that's the vocation as far as i can understand <laughs> can you take out boss health from the hud i don't know i didn't test that how much better does it get compared to dark arisen i really like this one more there's much more quality of life uh, so yeah, I think it's better. Weapons have their variants, like Archer having short and longbow. Uh, I don't believe that's going to be the case. Do we have pause on opening inventory? Yes. Cool to see you played. Sorry I'm late if you answered it. Could you please repeat regarding the FPS thing on PS5? Is it really 30 unlocked? It is 30 unlocked. Thief gets roll ammo. I believe so, yeah. People are already whining when they have zero experience playing Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah, I noticed that. I went I went to like the the Reddit thread or whatever. And there were a bunch of people just like being super negative about the game and I was like, bro, I I don't know what I, I don't even know. It it's weird to me, like at what what point we're at. Like I can understand people being upset over the 60 FPS thing. I think that's fair criticism. Like I said, it's not going to stop me from playing the game. Even if I'm playing locked 30 FPS on PC, 
Would I rather play 60? Yup. Would I rather play even more than 60? You better believe it. Is it going to stop me from playing if it's only 30? Hell no. I'll still play it. But I've seen a lot of complaints in regards to like, oh, there's only 10 vocations. <laughs> you mean there's only 10 classes? Would you rather have 10 really good classes? Or I believe that the community was theorizing like six, something like 64 or something like that. Or 64 shallow classes. Like what, what, what do you want? You know, that that I feel I I just think that it's unreasonable for people to go like, no, I want I want I want 200 vocations. It's like, well, you know, I don't want to play tax. I don't want to pay taxes, but there's some things that we just don't get. Compared to Elden Ring, what do you think the ratio of areas are in terms of how many locations there are in Dragon's Dogma 2? I have no idea. I got to play the game for three hours. I can't stomach this pawn thing. It's just so dumb. It is not dumb at all. That's literally the core aspect of Dragon's Dogma. And if you don't like the idea of pawns, Dragon's Dogma is 100% not for you. I'm sorry. Would you recommend it to someone who mainly plays Monster Hunter and Souls games? Absolutely. How intense was fall damage? It was not too bad. Is it imperative to avoid falling or can you risk it? You can risk it, but not from too high. Do the weapons have their variants, like Archer having short and... I think I already answered this. You guys are repeating questions. Oh, God. It scrolled again. I'm lost. It's all over. You didn't try Warrior? No. Urkan, what's the meaning of life? Wasn't it 42? I think somebody figured that out at some point, and they figured out it was 42. Omega Metroid, I don't think that'll be the case. I think it will be powerful in terms of, like, the warfare being overpowered. I don't think it will be overpowered. I think there'll be some type of balance to it. Which vocation are you maining this time around? Probably Mystic Spearhand. Do augments affect pawn behavior? I would imagine so. <laughs> the goofy hell is perfect. <laughs> How's the difficulty learning curve? Uh, this is not a good snapshot of gameplay where I can even assess that. I think it's going to be very similar to Dragon's Dogma, wherein it all depends on how you follow the the instructions that are given to you. So, like, if you stick to the stuff that you're supposed to be doing, like the main quest, I would expect there to have a very smooth curve. If you step off the beaten path, I would expect you to get curb stomped into oblivion, which is what happened to me in the original when I stepped off the beaten path and decided to go fight a drake and then was stuck there for hours on end the very first time I played. So yeah. This is the direct sequel to the first Dragon's Dogma. Is it, is it necessary to play the first game? As far as I'm aware, it is not necessary for you to play the first game. This takes place in a parallel world. So it's not a direct sequel. It's just something that takes place in a parallel world. So whether there might be, you know, callbacks and stuff like that, you don't really need to know the story of the first one, I don't think. I think you'll be fine. Is Rook still there? I didn't see Rook. Is your speed and stamina affected by inventory weight? Yes. You think we're going to get a demo this Friday? No. Any rumors about hidden vocations? Not that I've seen. Are they masterworks all? You better believe it. can imagine didn't say anything about FSR, the LSS. Nope. Were all vocations, basic attacks, just endless combo? Or was that just thief? Uh, for the fighter, it definitely wasn't. There was like a clear reset point. Uh, however, the Mystic Spearhand had one where if you mashed square, he starts spinning. So like... Uh, it was this one. 
Like, watch how it starts spinning. This is pretty much an infinite combo. I'm still doing it while he's doing this. <laughs> but yeah. I heard a pawn's voice saying, my old master only hired females, I wonder why. Yep, that happens. That happened to me quite a few times, I heard that pawn. Constantly moving items from my inventory, my pawns killed the first game for me. Yeah, I'm hoping that the logistician is going to help with that, but I don't even know if any of the pawns that we had there had logistician. How would you rate the difficulty based on what you played? Like, I know the first game wasn't the easiest. It's about on par with the first game. I... Although I believe Itsuno said it would be harder. However, the first game had this uh, hard mode that was kind of like weird. I always played on hard mode when they've implemented that. And what would happen was the difficulty curve was completely borked. Because it was... Al I think it was near impossible to play a melee character at the beginning of hard mode. But after you played a little bit as like ranged or something, then you could buy armor and stuff. And then you could just play the game normally. But the beginning of the game was way harder than the ending of the game in hard mode, which I found interesting. But yeah, I, I'm hoping it's nothing like the hard mode of the first one, because that was just like really wonky balancing. Uh, but Itsuno said it was going to be harder, I think, in some interview. Are there quick item slots? There were. That's one of the things that I brought up. And as a matter of fact, it was really cool because... So if you press L1, which is the same thing that you use to access your um, your skills, your weapon skills, uh, you will get a menu on the bottom left-hand side right here where the top button would be use healing item and it would actually cycle through healing items. Because if, you, if you've played Dragon's Dogma, you know that you can have like green varish or some random potion or some other thing in your inventory and all of those will heal you so it would just cycle through all of your healing items when you run out it will pick another one and it will keep healing so long as there's a healing item on you it was the same thing for stamina except instead of being up d-pad it would be down d-pad so there's that what was the aspect of the game that you really enjoyed i mean besides the spear hand vocation which was very surprising and i absolutely loved it there was also the there was also the just the overall sense of scale in the world which feel, feels completely massive it's a type of world that i just like i want to jump in and i want to get immersed i don't want to be pressured into doing the main story i just want to like jump in there do random things that some npc needs or whatever do quests explore that's what I wanted to do. One of the one of the things that I that the game really made me want to do while I was playing is like I just want to stop and appreciate, but I couldn't. So it was very frustrating. But it made me really just want to stop at points and like look off into the distance and look at the vistas and just appreciate a little bit before moving on to the next spot because it's just that kind of game. It feels very intricate in terms of the way that each pathway goes and when, where there's forests, where there's caves, where there's temples, all of these things we would just explore and go to. It felt really cool. So yeah. Should I play Dragon's Dogma 1 before 2? You don't have to. I have it on my Switch. Is that good enough to play the first one? Yeah, it runs fine on the Switch. It, it runs just fine. No problems. Uh, and it's like, look, if you want to play the first one, you can. I don't think you have to if you don't want to. Do you know if the enemies will scale with your character's level, or will it be like Elden Ring? I don't think enemies are going to scale, because, like, if you notice here, if if this had enemy scaling, right? If this enemy had enemy scaling, then it would have been significantly easier, which it wasn't. Not saying I couldn't kill it, I could, but it was going to be one hell of a time investment. How would you scale Dragon's Dogma 2 compared to 1? It just feels like an evolution of the original. Would you like a uh, Bitter Black Isle style DLC or something else entirely new? Um, I'd like them to do their usual thing that they do with Ultimate Editions. 
which is interesting because the first time that I experienced it was with Dark Arisen. I was like, this is weird. I don't, I don't understand why I have to buy a new game and my save file is wasted. This is weird. But to be honest, yeah, I, I'd like that. It doesn't have to be like Bitter Black Isle. It just has to be an expansion on the level of something like an Ultimate Edition, eventually, if anything. Demo seem to have some upscaling issues with the shadows and bushes. I, I don't know. I didn't pay too much attention to that. <clears throat> Yami Florence, thank you very much for being grossing us for 34 months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate support. Thank you. There's no way this game has just the 10 vocations announced. Okay. I guess you know more than Itsuno who said that was the case. But it would be cool if it didn't. It would be cool if Itsuno is lying. <laughs> if Itsuno is just like, nah, there's only 10 vocations. And deep down inside he's like, except for the secret one. <laughs> that would be cool, but I don't think that's the case. Which level were you and how did stamina management feel? It feels pretty much in line with what you expect from the first one. If you run too much, you're going to run out of stamina. But your pawns are going to come in fairly quickly and help you back on your feet to start recovering stamina. So, yeah. Pawn dispositions. I don't know. I didn't play too much of that. Would you say from your time playing that it would be a safe bet to pre-order? Like I said, the the only thing that I can see it being problematic for people is the the whole frames per second thing. If you are someone who is extremely concerned about 30 FPS and performance and all of that stuff, I don't think you should pre-order. If, however, that is not a deal breaker for you, yeah, you should pre-order. I mean, you shouldn't really pre-order ever, to be honest, because like, you know, there's no, I mean, unless you're getting like a physical version, I guess, because then there is some scarcity. But like, if you're getting the digital version, who cares about pre-orders? There's no digital scarcity. It, it's usually just not the best practice to pre-order. Although I guess this game has some pre-order bonus or something like that. So I guess if you want those, sure, should be safe. But like I said, the only real holdup is the 30 FPS thing. If the potential of having to play the game at 30 fps is a problem for you i would hold off because i haven't seen a version of the game that plays entirely full 60. so i can't really uh advise people on that front but the frame rate is really the only concern that i have Davi Vosk, were you any soundtrack highlights the time that you spend with the game? Uh, I didn't really pay that much attention, Davi. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gaijin actually asked me to think the same thing the other day. Gaijin was asking me if it seemed like it was the same composer. I suspect it might be. Like, let me see if I have one of the ogre battles here. Because I, I think I think on this Cyclops battle you hear the traditional uh dragon's dogma you know when when the advantage turns to your favor so maybe this will give you a, a hint so let's let's watch this uh this cyclo cyclops section okay actually we can just watch the ogre one as well because it's pretty cool and both of these should have uh, a decent chunk of audio for you to make out davi if you're still here because like I said, there's a massive delay between the messages I'm reading because I keep pausing chat.
The ragdoll. I think this is the one I smash up against the wall. I love this. Watch the noise it's going to make when we smash him up against the wall. Get the absolute crap beat out of you, Cyclops. See, like, this is the, the reverse, the reversal music that I was kind of like talking about. <clears throat> How was the character creator? Well, we didn't get to create characters. The characters were pre-made for us. Gameplay why it looks pretty clean. How did the interface feel when it came to interacting with inventory and equipment? I didn't do that that much, but it felt fine. No real complaints. Do the cities not need to be loaded into? They do not. Why do you think they use this color notation if they aren't doing more any more classes? I don't know. Were there a lot of transition loading screens like into cities? Nope. They're the only loading screens that I've experienced was when I rode the ox cart. So the way the ox cart works is they just have a chance to spawn, I would imagine, uh, so long as you're close to a road. And so they show up and you can get on the ox heart cart and you pay the dude and he will take you. I think it's probably the closest city, but he will tell you what city he's going to. And then you can pay him money and he'll take you there. And so the thing is, as you pay him money, you know, the cart stops walking, but very slowly. And then you can hit triangle to doze off and your character goes to sleep. And that's when you get a loading screen to go towards the city. However, you can also be interrupted uh, by like a random encounter or something like that. So that's the way that works. Vape wizard. <laughs> How's PC performance? I only played PS5. Will there be additional races? I believe it's only human and beastrin. Also, are the revealed jobs? Yeah, these are the revealed jobs, all of them. We know dwarves are in the game. Do we? I mean, I, I guess I did see a character that looked like a dwarf. So maybe. Is the world layout exploration similar to the first one? Is the world more inhabited, denser? I, th I think it was denser. I think there's less negative space. I'm glad you disagreed that Trickster is lackluster. It's very tough to see usefulness with it in video format. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Like, I thought it was going to be boring. Like, I was even thinking about not even trying it. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to go through all this trouble to try out this class, and it's probably going to suck. And then I started playing it, and I was like, no, actually, this is pretty fun, and it works really well. But again, I only played a little bit of it, right? I think out of everything that I've played, I probably played like 30 minutes of Trickster, give or take. 
Uh, so there was even stuff that I didn't realize. Like there was this skill that he could do, uh, which was a big AOE aggro thing. And I didn't know that skill was a thing. So initially to get aggro, I would just run up to the enemies and be like, ah, take my, my freak. What do you call the, the things that people vape from? Take my vape cigarette. <laughs> just like whacking them with the sensor <laughs> to get aggro. But there's just straight up a skill that you do where he just like does like this and big AOE aggro to everything. And you can hold the button and he like throws little puffs of smoke uh, to grab the aggro from a distance. And I, I was like, no, I'm going to hit you with the sensor. <laughs> Is there a numerical representation of what the passive skills and skills you take from other classes do? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. <clears throat> no, I didn't try luring monsters inside human settlements. I do not have a PS5. Is the game on PC going to be working as good? I hope so, because I plan on playing on PC this time around. <laughs> <clears throat> Do we know how quickly the advanced hybrid vocations became become available? Um, you have to find the trainer this time around. So, like, they actually show that, I think, in characters. We go here to the official website. So, for instance, this guy... What does this guy teach? This is... I think this is just a fighter, or is it the warrior? Yeah, this is the fighter... Uh, but I think that fighter will be unlocked from the get-go, but this is like your, your fighter trainer. But then this guy, he's the guy who's going to teach you Mystic Spearhand. So this guy you'll have to find, and if you don't find him, you can't become a Mystic Spearhand. But I'm assuming they'll give you, like, clues and stuff as to where he is. Uh, this whole lady is the trickster trainer. So, since it says here, Vermudian Court Oracle, you'll probably have to go to Vermont in order to get this one. But yeah, that's that's what I would predict. This guy seems much more isolated, so it's going to be harder to get him. Which makes sense, because I think this is the most fun vocation by far. But yeah. What's the difference between mage and sorcerer? Mage is more of a support spellcaster. Whereas Sorcerer is more of a offensive spellcaster. So if you want to be like a damage dealing uh, spellcaster, you want to be a Sorcerer. If you want to be a more support spellcaster that can actually cast heals and buffs and stuff like that, you want to be a mage. I didn't like the first one. Should I play this one? Uh, I don't know. It's rough because while there are improvements... At its core, it's very much the same vibe as the original one. So if the original one didn't vibe with you, I'm not sure that this one will. Did you do any exploration? I ran around the map a whole lot. Similar to the first game, better. Exploration feels much better because the level of detail that you get this time around and just the levels themselves feel like they're more prepared. I say levels, you know, the, the spaces feel like they're more prepared and more enjoyable to to explore than the first one, personally. If you're able to get a more deeper look in how fast travel works, the ox cart stuff. I believe I just talked about that, so hopefully I answered your question. But yeah, basically ox carts, you jump on them, you hit a button to doze off, it loads into the next area, and you're either there, or you're at a random encounter that you will have to fight, and then you get back on the ox cart and continue your journey. Pawns can't use hybrid vocations, no. What is Ring of Assurance? I have no idea. I haven't looked at any of the pre-order stuff that you can get. Was there any gameplay stat differences for swords and maces or just a visual? Uh, I didn't pay too much attention to that because of time restrictions, but I think it's mostly visual. Is there a mode where it's only 30 FPS locked? I couldn't check that. Is it able to go higher than 30 on console? It was 60 FPS on the map. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> when I opened the map, it sure as hell felt like 60 FPS. When I closed the map, it sure as hell felt like it went back down to 30. <laughs> <sighs> Is still a hard mode with XP and gold multiplier? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't think there will be. Uh, and I hope there won't be. You know if this will run well on Steam Deck or get Steam Deck support? They haven't said anything about that yet. I'm curious as to how many people actually played and beat the original Dragon's Dogma. Uh, I mean, I did. Long, long time ago. More important, is there a dog to pet? I don't know. Is it 60 on PC? Do not know. Will we get a demo of Dragon's Dogma 2? I doubt it. You saw you get thrashed by the ogre in the video from earlier. Can't wait to see your dwarf build drop kick the ogre as payback. I don't think there's a drop kick thing, but if there is, you better believe I'll do it. Are there time locked quests? I didn't test quests, but I believe there will be. Good lord, chat scrolled again, and I can't see anything. <clears throat> also, are my notifications not working? Like, what the hell is going on with YouTube alerts, dude? Did you mess around with the Mystic Knight at all? There's no Mystic Knight. <laughs> Jeff Martinez just earned himself uh, a nice, a nice comeback tomorrow, bro. How are you going to tell people, like, ooh, console people need to deal with their slow system? Sorry, well, didn't buy into the PC Master Race. Make better decisions next time. Bro, how are you going to unironically say dumb shit like that? God, you're dumb. You're so dumb, dude. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. The worst part is that, you know, there's a lot of people that say this and they're joking around, and then there's some people that actually say this unironically. Motherfucker's sitting over there on, like, a mountain of money. Just like, oh, I'm buy the most expensive shit I can. And then starts making fun of all the plebs that can't afford it. Fuck you, dude. The fuck out of here. Loser. I have two computers. That doesn't make me any better than somebody that plays on a PlayStation 5 or a PlayStation 4 for that matter. Learn some fucking humility, bitch. What the hell did I? It really does upset me, people like this. Because they're just like, oh, man. Like flexing their fucking wealth. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Fuck out of here. Come back tomorrow. And maybe tomorrow I'll be in a good enough mood. Or maybe tomorrow I'll just ban your ass again. Anyway. What if higher FPS modes like performance or graphics? I don't know if there's performance mode. I haven't seen anything on that front. Is there actual co-op now? Nope, just pawn rentals. Sorry if you already answered. Have you seen new enemies in the trailers? You have seen mostly the same enemies. First one, goblins, ogres, griffins, dragons, zombies. No, I didn't see anything new. I was actually looking for the minotaur. They told me there was a minotaur on the build, and I kept looking for it. So, this guy? Where is he? This guy. I was looking for this guy to fight, but I couldn't find him. I actually spent a decent chunk of time just running around the map trying to find this guy, and I couldn't find him. Is a 30 FPS cap for 4K? The version that we were playing was running at 1080p. I don't know if that was because it was set up that way, because that was a limitation of the monitors. I'm not even sure if I was supposed to if I was supposed to learn that it was 1080p. I just went to the console menu and like, I'm curious. Let me see what this is running at. <laughs> Nobody told me I couldn't say it, so I think it should be fine. But yeah. It it could have been the monitors. It could have been uh, that they just set up the build to run at 1080p for you know stability purposes to prevent it from crashing or something. Because again, these builds are usually several months old, so there's still probably some optimization to be had. Journey electric guitars in the soundtrack? No. No, I know. I wanted gun um, done gone into free as well. It wasn't there, bro. It wasn't there. I'm sorry. Some of the creators said they were playing in 4K while he said it was 1080p. Is that confirmed? If that is the case, then it's probably because it was a monitor thing, I would imagine. If, if people said that they were playing in 4K, that probably means it was a monitor limitation. Maybe they only had 1080p monitors available or something like that. I do not know. Like I said, I don't know. 
It's not like I'm sitting over there and it's like, hmm, let me look at the, the reference of this monitor. I need to see uh, how good this monitor is. It's like, bro, we get in there and we're like, we just want to play the game and record footage. That's pretty much it. I was the enemy variety. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot in the vocation previews. I think they're holding back on some of the enemies. At least I hope that is the case uh, because I didn't see anything more than what you guys have seen in the in the footage. Is the magic still as grand and beautiful as the first game? I did not play any of the caster classes besides uh, the Mystic Spearhand, which technically speaking is half caster. Uh, so I, I don't know. Not to mention that with a lot of those classes, usually stuff would get really crazy in the high levels. The beginning levels were still fairly tame. So the, I believe that the stuff we were playing was around level 24, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. The fighter gets some kind of enchanted parry. Do you know if it functions similar to Mystic Knight's counter? I don't know. I didn't test that stuff. As a matter of fact, I saw some footage from another content creator and their fighter, like, because they were messing with the menus, and like I said, I couldn't uh, show menus, but the menu that they had for their fighter skills had more skills than my menu. So I'm not sure if that's because he did his fighter on the Mystic Spearhand save, where I did my fighter on the Magic Archer save. And maybe that caused it to have more skills on the other save or something like that. But in my save, I didn't even have as many skills as one of the other videos that I've seen online. So I didn't get to play around too much with that. Is there any kind of multiplayer? Nope. I did not play Warrior Vocation. How do the hits feel? Impactful, chunky, or weak soft? They feel chunky. Very chunky. Love it. Uh, Sakuya-sama, I'm not aware of a difficulty slide or anything like that, so I'm assuming, for the beginning at least, there should only be one difficulty. How does the war thing vocation work? We couldn't test warfare. Are the graphics a step up from the original? Significant step up. Can you tell me if they added transmog? As far as I'm aware, no. Is there any cone lab for Dragon's Dogma 2 you'd like to see? I would like to see Berserk for sure, which was on uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. I would also like to see Monster Hunter, and it'd be cool to see like Dark Souls or Elden Ring or something like that. That'd be legit. Did the game live up to expectations when I've built up over the years? For me, yep. Yeah, I like it a lot. Which vocations have a dodge? Only Thief. Dead Captain Jones, thank you very much for the souls. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. I believe so. I don't even know if it's the Thief or it's the Archer, or both. Because I didn't play those vocations, but yeah. Is entering the inventory pausing for item use in combat? Yes. I have no idea, Adriano, about your specs and whatnot. You think in the 7900 PC for this? I mean, both of the PCs can should be able to run it fine. Either the 6900 PC or the 7900 PC. I'm not overly concerned about that. What happened to magic dagger skills that Magic Archer used to have? No idea. No more Mystic Knight? I don't believe so. <clears throat> Combat and movement felt nice and weighty. Essential darkness? Yes. Stamina outside the cities, how does it work? Is it like the first one? May I hope like Elden Ring where it's only in fights that it's consumed? Nope. You consume stamina for everything. Are pawns cross-platform? Not as far as I'm aware. Thoughts on the headline. After three hours of Dragon's Dogma 2, I'm convinced it's not just gaudy contender. It may be an all-time great. I saw that headline. That might be the case, but I don't know. 
I, I don't know if, it, if it'll be an all-time great or not. I think it definitely has the potential for it. But I think that that headline is mostly just to drum up attention, as with everything. I will want to play more before I would say something like that. Like, I'm super excited for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm super hyped for it. Like, legitimately, I do think that what I've played is absolutely amazing. But to uh, classify it as one of the all-time greats, I'm going to have to see some more. There's potential there for it, for sure. Are there hybrid classes here, like in the first game? Yes. Rory, can you answer my super chat, please? Already did. I'm sorry, there's a delay, guys, because, like, I'm trying to go through all the questions. Have they said why they removed Mystic Knight? Nope. Tell me the Pond's Voss lines are as long and over flamboyant like in the preview videos. I mean, if you've watched the preview videos, that's what they are. <clears throat> Please, please tell me this game feels like gaudy to you. Potentially, yeah. Okay, I'm going to skip to the bottom of chat because otherwise I'm never going to get there. Rickon, was there heavy armor restrictions that you could see? I have a plate archer. Uh, there's armor restrictions, just like in the first one. So, like, you have specific equipment for specific vocations. I think it's possible for them to have more vocations. Yeah, why not? South Source has a skill to very quickly recover stamina. Have you noticed if other vocations have the same mechanic? Nope. Can you throw chickens or animals like pigs again and play ball with them between the NPCs? I believe so. How is the skill progression already at your level? Did you already see an improvement on gameplay for the level you reach from basic attacks? Not exactly sure what that means. Skill progression... If you mean did they already affect basic attacks? Maybe. I didn't look too deeply into it. How many armor slots? And is there slots for, like, clothes and shirts? I don't think there's clothes and shirts. Did you see the moon at night? No. I didn't look for it. How long did the bigger fights take you with the large enemies? The health bars look massive, and I'm just wondering how long it takes to take down. I didn't take down the Drake, because I realized that was going to take a while. Uh, but the rest of them, like Cyclopses and uh, Ogres, was, like, two, three minutes, give or take. Was 30 FPS an issue? Not for me, but I'm very tolerant to that stuff. I always prefer 60, but I can play a game at 30, no problem. I mean, my main save of Months on a Rise is still on the Switch. Can we have multiple saves? As far as I'm aware, you can only have one, but if you're playing on console, you can have multiple profiles, and you can have different saves on each of those profiles. You can easily make profiles, so that shouldn't be a problem. Did you notice that button remapping was an option? Nope, I didn't mess with the menus for that. I already answered the stamina outside of cities. It, it, you always consume stamina when you're running. I've already seen an improvement in gameplay speed for the level you reach from the basic attacks reaching level 2627. I, I don't know how to answer that question, dude. The, gameplay speed? You mean if you attack faster? No, I don't think you attack faster as you level up. Unless it's a thief thing or something, but like for the spear hand, I don't think that's going to be a, th a thing. <laughs> Saw a video where the guy on PS5 was at 60, but would drop at higher intensity zones. Interesting. Seems like it's confirmed they removed clothing. Maybe. So no confirmed in an interview that the 10 we've seen are all we have in base game. Is there a shortcut to use healing items? Yes. There is. You press L1, which is the same button as your skills. Can't get past the tutorial area in Dragon's Dogma is a huge turnoff. Did you jump in higher level or was it the beginning? We jumped in at higher levels. What's the difficulty like? Felt pretty nice. How were the item shops? Did the item prices match the money earned? Or was there a bloat gap between like the two Monster Hunter games tend to have? I didn't really pay too much attention to how much gold I was getting. As a matter of fact, I didn't even loot things because of the, the weight system. I didn't want it to get overweight, so I didn't even loot chests. I ignored them. Uh, Frankie Donuts, thank you very much for being gross with us for three months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate support. Thank you. Dragon's Dogma 1, you felt like you could run longer, attack faster, a little bit longer, get skill passives, help speed things up. 
Uh, <clears throat> I didn't really mess with the passives too much in the demo, no. But yeah, you will be able to run longer because you get more stamina when you level up more. So you'll be able to run longer and you'll be able to, I don't know, use skills faster or something like that. Yeah, sure. That's probably a thing in this one as well. Scale of 1 to 10, how fun was it for you? And do you think it feels more fun than the first game? It definitely feels more fun than the first game. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I don't know. It's like, it's only three hours. So there's going to be a heavy recency bias as to how fun it was. So I'm going to knock down a point and say 9. But if I'm be honest as to how I felt while I was playing the NBA in 11. <laughs> but it's like, I, I, I recognize that I'm very much vulnerable to recency bias. So... If you decide your pawn's built, it's going to be a fighter. It's going to be a fighter. My pawn is going to be a fighter. Because I am probably not going to play a fighter. I don't think. Because I'm, I'm pretty much dead set on either Warfarer or Mystic Spearhand. And right now I'm leaning more towards Mystic Spearhand. So a fighter would make the most sense for my pawn. I want my pawn to be a tank. And that way, if people um, rent my pawn, it's going to be like having me in the party because I usually play tanks. So that's kind of like also the idea. I'm also thinking of you guys as to the selection of my own pawn. Did you get some rest? No! Thank you for asking, Dark Hero. I have still not gotten any rest, and I've noticed since the beginning of this stream that my throat hurts, so I think I'm getting sick. <laughs> No, I didn't I didn't use uh port crystals at all. I said earlier you could loot gear from monsters. It's not then just tied to chest this time around. I mean, what I looted from monsters probably more materials. I don't know if I looted like a weapon from a monster. Like I said, I even avoided looting most things because of the weight. Because I didn't want it to be bogged down waiting for stuff, so I, I don't know. Helm splitter, skull splitter in the game. Uh, not in the version that I was playing. Do we still not know the full limitations of warfare? Nope. Hot water, whiskey, lemon juice, and honey. Yep, I need to get on that. Is the level design still comprised of hills and valleys, linear paths that this allow you to pass from one side of the map to the other? How open is the world from the get-go? It feels pretty open, but it's not like I was trying to just go up mountain and up mountains and Skyrim my way through them. Although I did uh use the mystic spear hand right he's got a skill where he just kind of like charges forward and i use that to cross over some cliff gaps which i think you probably could do that in the first one as well with the you guys remember that mystic knight skill where he would jump up in the air and then yeet himself forward so the mystic knight has a skill somewhat similar to that except it goes straight forward and i definitely there were a lot of situations where like there's this big cliff in my way but I can see the other side, and I'd be like, just zip right across, which is really cool. Do hope they add a co-op mode in the future. I don't think they will, because if they wanted to, this would have been the perfect time to do it. And if they didn't do it now, it's because that's just their whole design philosophy for this game is about the pawn. And they've mentioned that quite a bit, so... No, I think cities have different names in this one. I don't think there's a Grand Soren. Is there some kind of transmog or custom visuals, armor, outfit? As far as I'm aware, no. What races are available for creation? Human and Beast Ren, I think. I think that's it. <sighs> Be it, team. I think that's all of the questions that I will be answering for now, mostly because, like I said, my throat's starting to hurt and I still have another stream to do today. So I need to go brew myself some tea. I need to go fix myself so that I can not be sick because being sick in the next couple of days is a big no-no. Did you see your experience in upgrade crafting for weapons? Yes, you can enhance your weapons just like the first one. Thank you all very much for hanging out with me. If you guys enjoyed this video, do remember, hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification icon, all that jazz. If you want to know more, I have a much more concise video up on the channel right now that you guys can check out. Uh, but yeah, 
I try to answer as many questions as possible. Sorry if I missed your question. I promise you I did my best. I did not mean to ignore you. Thank you all for the support. And um, remember, we're going to be streaming in about 90 minutes for the Xbox showcase. So yeah. Uh, hectic, yes. I always felt like there was always an adventure to go on. For sure. Thank you guys. See you all later. Have a good one, team.